But yeah, I think this is going to be... I've gotten used to talking to avatars. I've gotten used to talking to... I like being human avatars. Yeah, it's really fun talking yeah. with them. Like over time, I've really got to like understand like the expressions, the little micro expressions that are on these <laughs> avatars. Like you really like feel like you're talking to someone. And uh, I've talked to humans, of course. And now we'll be talking to the woman behind the headset with the googly eyes. <laughs> and this is going to be a fun treat. But welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, for, um... for the people who don't know who you are, though, uh, okay. let us know a little bit about yourself. Cool. So I'm Genghis VR. Uh, I've been into VR since like 2009. I used to follow all the Palmer Lucky stuff. And uh, I just followed along until I demoed the first headset in 2015. They were like, I think it was HTC or Valve. Yep. They were going around the campuses. So I got to try that out. And as soon as I tried it, I was blown away. I think it was like Tilt Brush or the blue that I tried. And um, once they, it released in 2016, I had just got out of college and I couldn't afford a headset. So I, I went to the bank, I got a loan, and I bought a Vive, and then I've just been obsessed ever since. Um, very early in VR. I do a lot of modding VR stuff, so I made a whole overhaul for Fallout VR. I don't know if, you've, if you're into like the Bethesda oh, yeah. games. Oh, but, yeah. So if you search for Fallout VR mods, I think I'm like one of the top two things that come up. I made this whole auto-installing list for it which makes the performance better. Um, and I was doing that for the past year. And I think like over 20,000 people or something are using it now. And I did a bunch of support for that. Um, i trying to think what else. I used to <laughs> do a lot of dancing in, in, a, in VR chat. I was big into the full body dancing scene. I, I think that the was the. Uh, I think that was the first thing I saw of you. Uh, it was the, oh, okay. was it, was it Halsey? Did you do one to her? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That was um, the first yeah, I saw of you. That's how I started my doing VR content was I used to go on VR chat. They would have these shows and I would do like full body dancing shows and make these complicated animations. People were like, oh, you should put your stuff on YouTube or whatever. So I started posting that and I didn't actually take it any like seriously at all until 2019 when I started to post more of the modding VR yep. stuff and post more reviews and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's can, kind of a bit about me. Oh, I ahead. can tell you when you uh, when you reached out, I know we were interacting a little bit on Twitter, and then you you asked to come on, and I was very excited. Um, a little bit of a fan of yours. Uh, I don't know if you knew. I, I've, I've seen pretty much <laughs> all your TikToks. Um, oh. <laughs> I definitely see everything on Twitter. But the reason I was very excited is there, there can be some negativity when it comes to VR every now and then. And it's usually out of love because people are very excited about VR. They love VR. And in these times that new items are not coming as hot off the press as they used to be, uh, people get antsy and they make their voice very much known. Um, but everything I've seen from you, it's very joyful. You mm -hmm. spend a lot of time showing the craziness and the positivity and just the wackiness that VR, I mean, googly eyes aside just just the just what you're using and, and the content you're making it's very joyful and i feel that it's lacking on at least my timeline not by anything poor but um when you want to talk it was very exciting because you just are a, a bundle of joy with what you're doing with with vr whether or not you sold your kidney to get there but uh i mean you have you have a little bit of everything uh it's very fun to watch where what got you i know yeah, you, you told me I'm, what I'm got big you into, into yeah. I'm big into immersive gaming. So you, I'm sure you saw the Skyrim video. I don't know if oh, you yeah. saw that. Yeah, that um, I I've been playing Skyrim mod modding these games since like 2004 or something, and I just love it. I love just being lost in a world. Um, and so that I <laughs> Skyrim VR is still one of my favorite VR games, despite like the problems with it. Like it's not made for VR, but it can be one of the most immersive things you can experience. I think these days. Especially with the, the smart fan mod. It's called Immersive Winds VR, and I think it was like 20 bucks in total, and it blows wind on you. It's crazy. So wait, so <laughs> like how do you use wind. this? I'm very curious about so this. So you plug in a smart plug. It's like a cheap, I have a, like a $10 smart plug. You plug in, I have two fans that from like opposite sides, and then there's a mod that hooks into the game. So depending on where you are in Skyrim, it'll blow wind on you at like varying temperatures. <laughs> so you can feel it. You can feel it. Um, and you can talk to NPCs with your own voice. You can shout. You can just be lost. The only thing is, like, we need, like, a smell of vision You know, like, that that thing that... The feel real. The scam. Yeah. And then you can, like, smell Nazim. Oh, I thought it was a scam, too. They got I shut down. It, 
Yeah, they, yeah. It was, uh, sure. They they poorly timed, not them, but they poorly timed their news with the whole anti vape um oh, stuff that was going on i think it was just really yeah. bad timing um but i've gotta i've gotta figure out like how'd you get to this path of getting an, a demo of the blue on a campus to spending crazy astronomical amounts of money on the <laughs> most awesome vr setups like how did you progress was, from from x to y so that i think they wrote the article that was over like five years that's the amount i spent this entire time and just like dropped it all at once uh, I've just been building up my setup for years and years. Like any kind of disposable income, I would just put it back into VR. Um, and I have stuck with, I'm using a Vibe Pro I now. I haven't tried the Index at all just because I went wireless when my third HTC cord broke and I just Oof. can't really go back to a cord now because I've been using wireless VR for so long. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've just, I've continually built up my setup. I just got the B-Haptic stuff like four months ago, four or five months ago. And I'm loving that. Um, yeah, I'm just all about VR. I would say like 90% of my time using a computer these days is just on VR. Uh, using VR. Using so, for exercise. And Go ahead. So on the, on the accessory standpoint, because I think that's, mm -hmm. I, I love watching your stuff. And I think you'll have some good insight for people watching because everyone is just, you know, you get blasted with this accessory, that accessory, but you're using a lot of them. So for someone yeah. new to VR who, let's just say they've already got the headset, they've been playing for a while and they want to step up their game. What's your top three recommendations for VR accessories for somebody? Probably the first one is full body tracking. I'm a big proponent of that. Um, a lot of people, you know, are worried about it about because it doesn't, it only has the port and I think Blade and Sorcery, VR chat, a couple of others, but I use two of them for natural locomotion which I think makes a better VR treadmill um, these days than actually like, paying a bunch of money for a real VR treadmill. Because you can like run, you can jump, and it Do you, you want to get into that? That, that very truth <laughs> uh, video yeah, that you put out? A lot of people were kind of upset about that, but <laughs> I have tried the Omni, and I thought it was trash. You were sliding on the ground, and it, it doesn't feel like walking to me. Um, and I think you can get a better locomotion walking in VR by just using trackers or even just your controllers. I, I just used to use them. The hand controllers of natural locomotion mm -hmm. before I had trackers, and it works really good, in my opinion. You can jog, jog run, jump. So, and so for people who, who may not have seen that tweet, what we're talking about is um, she made a very quick, down you know, right to the point, 30 second or so video on the Catwalk C, not specifically yeah. on that, but on the concept of uh, VR slide mills and, and her thoughts on them, um, where, and you quote me if I'm wrong here, but just the, not completely against them, but explaining that it is not similar to running or walking and you're sliding and the mechanics took you out of the immersion that you yeah. before. I don't that think, yeah, I don't think that it's worth the price and I don't think it's very immersive right now. I'm sure it'll get better. These things are, you know, it's just very early tech. Um, just like I didn't get the first set of uh, full body trackers, the VAD trackers, mm -hmm. I ended up getting the 2.0s because I knew something better would come out eventually. Um, so for people that are wondering if they should get it, I would recommend waiting at this point instead of dropping it's that much lot. money on. It's a it lot. is a lot of money. <laughs> I guess yeah, it might be useful if you don't have a lot of space. Like if you're very limited in your room, that might be a thing. It might be I mean, helpful, but I still think <laughs> it's walking in place. It's yeah. kind of like what, what the, the, I mean, I know you've built up your, your collection over time, but it is interesting. Like the amount of money that we are all as early adopters willing to spend, like, like I know you already mentioned one time that you, you know, some of your stuff is, was damaged the cords. And I've seen some of your posts about taping things together. Like none of my equipment is flawless right now. They all have bumps yeah. and bruises and I'm making them work. But we spend a considerable amount of money being okay with that because we want to chase that little that new adrenaline fix. So I get it in a way. Exactly. But it, it's yeah, slide mills are you got to be yeah. a special breed of per what, what what kind of person do you think has to be, you have to be to really dive into that and 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 work through its kinks and accept that. Like what mindset would you have to have? I mean, if I had if I had the money to drop on that, I'd be willing to try it. But because I didn't try the cat, I tried the Omni, which I had an, an arcade. Um, I think, you know, if you're just really, if you want like the ready player one experience, 
I guess, but I still think that just using trackers on your feet or hand controllers with natural locomotion is going to be a better experience because I like jumping. You know, mm. a lot of people. I heard I was watching your um your fireside chat with Tech Manju, and I think you got into like the physicality of VR. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't want to be physical with VR. I think, like someone like me, I love running around, jumping, just getting active. Really what are you jumping in? The game. Like what what uh what games are you jumping? I, in? I play Minecraft VR with the natural locomotion, and I have to jump up every single block, and it's a <laughs> lot. <laughs> I've gotten very tired. I think I can only play like maybe two hours at a time before I wiped out doing that. Um, I've never thought about yeah. it. I've, I can't think of any time I've ever needed to jump in a game, but that might be on I me. Mean, I could picture like if I had a lot of room, I could totally see myself playing like uh, Blade and Sorcery and doing like a lunge jump with a spear or something. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. But I, I think I've done it. that. I love jumping in that game, too. I do yeah, like kicks. <laughs> I I think that is an underrated thing. Like I watched one. I think I watched the one where you were a Jedi kicking people or a Sith. <laughs> you were a Sith. You were definitely a Sith kicking people. And I have never played that game with full body tracking. And the kicks, like I never thought. I I have never watched it or cared to look how that worked. But when you do look at it, it's something else. It's really something else, like value added, just by watching it. Because I'm so used to watching people just swing their arms and use the controller, but to see someone physically kick Sparta 300 style down a pit in their room and that translate on screen, it's kind of beautiful to watch. It really so much was. Fun. <laughs> um, I think I was watching Chris Quit's reality. He had just done a Blade and Sorcery one where he he was doing like crazy moves. He like jumped off a wall or something. <laughs> All doing right, so it was nuts. So we've got the the vibe full body tracking is number one. What would be the second best accessory for someone to look into? Um, if they don't have index controllers and they have a compatible headset, I would say get these. But I think there's only a few. Um, second, probably I if wireless VR. If that's ever an accessory for anything, I would say get that. That's a that's an important one. Um, I want to say the B haptics, but I think I had, I think there's a very like specific audience for the B haptics products. Um, I, I love my vest and I love, I use it all the time, but I, I think that for the, the average person using VR today, which they probably only use VR like at night or on the weekends or something, it's a, it's pretty expensive for what it does. I, I think it adds immersion. Um, but I don't know if like everyone is going to be happy with it because it's not it doesn't feel like real real touching or like real um bullet wounds or something like it adds something there yeah. but i use it because you know I'm a, I'm a content creator you're a content creator so you can use it to like for your audience um or someone that's very very into vr i think that it's worth it for them but for most people i don't i don't know <laughs> they would be super happy with the b haptics yeah so, I, I, I still love it but <laughs> I get what you're saying. It's very, it's specific use case. And it also, just like all your accessories and really all accessories in general, it, it requires a certain mindset. You have to be yeah. open. And I, I find it encouraging. I think VR, if anything, forces everybody to use their imagination a lot more. Um, and if you're willing to use your imagination and willing to accept what you're doing, it's beautiful at that point. But yeah, I completely understand how at times it is not a value add, but that's also going to come down to how games are utilizing it and how developers yeah. in the future start incorporating more. Right now, it's all, you know, most of the time, it's to my knowledge, like I talk with Alex VR a lot. I know he's a rep for B Haptics. It mm -hmm. comes down to people asking for it and then him bugging developers to put it in. But once it's used natively, I think it'll be pretty useful. Especially oh, yeah, with, absolutely. out of all the uh, accessories I have, and you can, I I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. It is the most easiest one that I have to set up. Um, yeah, I, I love how easy it is. Just turn it on. You don't have yeah. to mess with any Bluetooth settings or anything. Yeah, it's great. I still want support for, I don't know if you've played Into the Radius. I've been playing that a lot. I've seen, your, I've seen your video, but I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> I have it's, not. It's so much fun. It's it's great. It's what, what makes it so good I've been for playing VR for who, years. Uh, for having played it? Um, it has one of the best inventory systems I think I've ever seen in a VR game. It's, so it's got the VR backpack, but you can like, actually you have to dig through the backpack. You can put as much stuff as there in there, um, as you want, but if you don't organize it physically, then it'll be hard to actually get stuff out. So mm. it's got 
crazy. You should try it if you get the chance. No, that's actually um, nice. It's those small little pieces. Um, like I saw the thing, like you can like individually reload act like yeah, sing, I've never seen that either. It's crazy. I've yeah, never seen that in a game. When it comes also um, to the headset that you're using, I was curious because you got the googly eyes on it, but I know you use the Vive Pro I, correct? Yeah, I use the Vive Pro I. I got it cheap, so I found it on eBay cheap. Probably would have gotten it <laughs> otherwise. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've messed around a little bit with the eye tracking. Uh, obviously, you can use it in like Neos and VR chat, and you can use it for foveated rendering, which I've tried to mess with, but I'm not mm -hmm. super experienced with that yet. Um, yeah, I don't know too many people who have that. Um, so the people that I'm familiar with who use eye tracking regularly is very, it's mm -hmm. very few. So I never really get the chance to ask, but what value add have you noticed from it or have other people recognized that you're using it and made comments? Yeah, um, I think mostly in VR chat and social VR games. I think right now it's just Neos and VR chat. So mm -hmm. it's cool. I mean, you can like go up to people and you can like wink at them and it even like dilates your pupils, which is crazy. Oh, wow. So when you're like looking at, a mirror or something in VR and you see your pupils dilate. It's a cool experience. Uh, not a lot of, I mean, I wouldn't say you should go out and buy this new. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it for that. It's basically just a, a Vibe Pro. I think the audio is a little bit better than the regular Vibe Pro. I'm not super sure on that. But. When, it, when it comes to the eye track, and one thing I was really curious about is because obviously a typical person that you, you, you join on VR chat with or just meet randomly, they're mm -hmm. not paying too much attention, right? But do they notice the eye tracking? Like, is there something not off the word? I'm going to use the word off putting and not in the negative sense that it is like, gross, yeah, no, but off, <laughs> off putting that they notice something different of you or do they not notice it at all? No, they do. Yeah. I've, oh, had, wow. a lot, I've had a lot of people notice that, you know, because they can see where I'm looking. So, um, and it's not super accurate right now, especially in VR chat. Like, sometimes when I blink, only one eye will actually blink. So it'll make my avatar look pretty derpy. When I'm like blinking my eyes for real. Uh, but yeah, no, they, they notice it. I think they notice the be haptic stuff more because I'm always wearing like my vest in there too. So people can like see I'm wearing the vest and come up and touch my Oh, because your avatar anime actually body. has it on it, huh? I put it on it, yeah. Oh, okay. um, so people will know they can touch me in VR so I can make more TikToks using that. Well, so you can get banned off TikTok is what you mean. I didn't even get... Uh, yeah, that was the one I, I got <laughs> flagged for. Oh man, that's a whole nother thing that we can talk about. <laughs> Yo, that's it's gonna get it's kind of gnarly when you think about it. So for for context, guys, she made a video where someone was touching her in VR. Two people consensually just I mean, I, I yeah. think they were, everyone was adults. They were all that. adults. We were all yeah. adults. <laughs> and the video got taken down. What was it for? Grooming? Almost? Minor safety. Minor like it's safety. dangerous to minors, but there was no minors. That's not like it's not even that bad. They're they're really going after people on TikTok now. Um, that, it is interesting when you think about <laughs> it. Like it adds a whole different dimension to safety and security when you can feel someone in VR. Like I, I think TikTok went overboard, but they do that with a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I mean, how do you navigate? How do you think that's going to be navigated in the future? Oh, like uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's it doesn't feel like an actual human touch. It's you've used it it just vibrates yeah. um but yeah i mean for the future as these vests get you know more crazy and people can touch you that's an interesting conversation i mean i don't know i do know like if people realize i'm wearing a vest and a lot of people just like run over to me and start you know touching the vest <laughs> and stuff is that is that good for you or bad like is that annoying that when people I mean, notice it's, that I don't really care about it. Sometimes it's it's become a little much, so I have to like turn it off because it'll be like overstimulating, yeah. you know, just vibrating constantly. Um, I don't know. I, in VR chat, I'm not even like a huge fan of using it because mm. it's just it just vibrates with, on that specific part. I don't think it feels super realistic, but it's funny. So. Why do you think the um, you know, just going in the psyche of it, like why do you think people are so if they notice you <clears throat> wearing the B haptics vest? Which we're gonna just say you're using it in Neos VR for the future of this to not get you in any trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, wh when they notice it, why do you think they're so adamant? Like run over and start touching you. Like what's that? What's that inner like monkey thought that everybody's having that they know that they can touch <laughs> someone and they just immediately want to? Like is it just the excitement of something new? Yeah, it's probably the excitement of something new. I remember. I did it too, you know, when I met someone in, in one of these social games and they said they had a vest, I was like, I wanted to 
I want to go and touch you <laughs> over the internet. Like that's just a cool thing. It's different than super different. You know, yeah. I think people just like variety and they like seeing something new. I think it's kind. Of, I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of a big mind <laughs> fuck when you think about it. Like we went from like I went from playing a Game Boy to now being in a virtual world where someone can physically yeah. touch me while I'm in the comfort of my own home. Like it's insane. It's kind of scary. It's kind of insane, but it's awesome. It's scary, awesome, insane. Like, it's I don't know if we're ready. For <laughs> it's all good. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. But, like, when it comes with stuff like that, and this is going to, is a little bit of a heavy topic, but I've seen some of your posts, and I, I am curious. Being a woman in VR, do you think that's more of the reason that they're doing it possibly? Because I know that I've seen possibly, some of your comments, yeah. and <laughs> I've been in social VR. Y'all got it way rougher than I do. Yeah, that could be it. I mean, the person that said they had a vest when I first met them, they, they were a guy. I a lot of people were chasing them too. So. Yeah, that's true. I, <laughs> I think I, right now, I think it just depends if you have the vest, people are going to chase you on social VR. Yeah, <laughs> wherever you use it, do not let yeah. them know. They will abuse it. Like you tell them you have it when you're playing Pavlov, you're going to get shot in the head by your teammates. It's just going to happen. Have you used the head one? The head yeah. haptics? Like yeah. Is it good? I I've, I've heard mixed things about it. Um, it's off putting. I'll tell you that when you're not, like, <laughs> it's really off putting when you're like chilling. I heard in the it's game. uncomfortable. Is it like is it kind of uncomfortable on your face, like when it's vibrating? Um, I didn't. I didn't have that. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I have a on my. I used it when I had it on the quest, and I already have a, a leather VR cover on there. So taking that off and putting that on, it was pretty similar. Um, oh, okay. I don't think it was super uncomfortable, but it was definitely too much at times um you know yeah. you just be chilling minding your own business maybe pulling up the visor for a second to kind of look at your phone and next thing you know someone's shooting you right in the head and it, it's it's a lot of stimuli like it, it might be too much like you got the what you have arms vest do you have the face i just have the arms and the vest i don't i don't have the face yet so thought you know, about it like, it's already like, a lot of stimulation right yeah yeah i think i turn it up to like 200 percent too on oh, mine no. okay you're going hard <laughs> You're going real hard on that. For the immersion. It's all about uh, the immersion. For the immersion. What's the next step for you then? For the immersion. What, 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 are you, what are you looking at next for accessories? I don't know. Um, what else is there? Well, like I said before, smell of vision. You know, if that ever... I still want that thing. I feel like smelling in VR is the next logical step. <laughs> it's like, I, I, think it's, excuse me, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know what I'd want to smell in VR. Do I want to smell like constant gun casings? Like that's that's <laughs> what that would be all I'd be smelling with all the games I play would be constant gunpowder and that's about it. Yeah, you could barely be immersed, you know, by smelling the smelling the guns. I don't know if I'm I ready for that. But I wanna when smell it... Skyrim. That's what I wanna smell. <laughs> Just walk up to Nazim. Do you get to the cloud district, Nazim? <laughs> How many? I gotta ask. How many mods do you have going on in Skyrim? Right oh now? yeah, that is what I wanted to talk about. So okay, modding yeah. these games are obviously uh, they can be difficult and time consuming. So there is a program okay. called Wabajack, W A B B A J A C K, and it, it's yes. basically like a mod pack for think mod pack for Minecraft, but it's for Bethesda games. So I made one for Fallout VR, and I think there's like four for Skyrim VR, and it's there's a ton for like the flat games too. But you just click it, and it installs everything for you. Uh, so you can get it done in like half hour or something. But mm. the so I'm using a, one of those mod packs for Skyrim right now, and I think it has like 400 mods wow. or something. And I added some more. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty pretty modded, but it's so much fun. Yeah, I remember spending time using Mod Manager the last time I did it. I think I had about 200, but I didn't. Is, this sounds like a way easier method. I'll definitely link oh, it down yeah, in the yeah. video description because I remember yeah, spending. I'll send it to you way too much time with mod manager going through ones that just didn't work with others having to undo it all and then mm. by the time i got finished i got out of the cave in skyrim and i think i never played again i think i spent like yeah. a <laughs> week just like looking around and it's way too time consuming it's so i mean the second you do it for anyone who like wants the mod like go play skyrim just go play through the um the cave intro and get outside the cave and go to the first waterfall just look around the first town then restart with all the mods. You're gonna waste a lot of time just looking around because it dramatically changes it. <laughs> what what would you be your your recommendations for like the most value added mods that you put in? Um, 
Uh, well, like I said, I, I would recommend people use this mod pack thing. That's yeah. going to be the best thing. Uh, but the so the Higgs mod is you might have heard of it. It adds the Half Life Alex like mm. slash and grab thing, and it adds full physics, so you can actually like touch stuff in the game, and it has like hand tracking and everything. Oh, wow. And there's a full body now, BRIK, which has been out for a while. But the Higgs thing is crazy. It's even better than the Half Life Alex one. It's like easier to grab stuff, in my really? opinion. I yeah. did not do that. That would have been. I might have to go back in. Cause That's I, I, pretty new. It came out this year, I think. Uh, early this year. So people like are still like making better mods. It sounds like you got thing. a pretty big affinity for PCVR. Because, I mean, everything you're doing yeah. is straight PCVR. What made you go that route over the Oculus Quest? Because obviously that one's going to be a lot more cost effective. But you really seem to have doubled down on PCVR. I mean, I've, I've just been using, you know, I'm an early adopter of this stuff. I've been using it since 2016. So I'm biased towards PCVR <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Um, I did actually work for Oculus for a little bit. That's how I ended up getting my quest. I was oh. demoing the quest to people uh, when it first came out uh, at the beginning of last year. Last what year. were you doing over there? I was just demoing the Oculus to people. Like it was at a store, so it was just a part-time job. Wait, and when did they do this? This is interesting. I didn't know they ever did live demos. Uh, they did it in some places. So in my city, they were doing it, and they, it was just a seasonal job. But um, yeah, I worked there. I, talk to people about the quest so that's how i ended up getting mine um and i i did you know i did tell some people to get pc vr because they're like oh i want to stream <laughs> vr on this and i think streaming vr or recording vr is a lot easier on a pc headset oh yeah if you're making content yeah it can be you can do use a quest for it but it's just there's a lot of extra steps that you have to go through. Yeah, I don't think anything kind of anybody pain. will disagree with you. So when you were doing all these demos, that that's interesting. I want to hear what people thought. So like, what was the general perception from people? What were some of the good things you saw? The bad things? I never, I've yeah. never heard of anyone demoing. Yeah, so I didn't actually get to. Um, people didn't use the headset too much. I only got mm -hmm. to do that a few times. This was during the pandemic, so oh, okay, we could gotcha. show a lot of people the headset. But uh, a lot of people were impressed you know they were just they just wanted to get into the to the vr base <laughs> yeah um they had known nothing about vr so i think the quest is great for people just starting out you know if they want to take the dive it's cheap i always try to any of these people that i was showing it to i would mention the facebook stuff and the the data stuff i think that's important to know even though my own opinion is i don't think there's a whole lot you can do about it that's just the future of you know, this industry, but I think it's important to at least have the information and when decide you, for yourself. When you brought this up to people, because that's, that's interesting, because obviously when you brought it up, I saw your tweet about it one time, and mm -hmm. tech Twitter, you're going to get pushback and you're going to get people, you know, we're all in in deep in that conversation, but these people who were coming with no VR experience and were just coming to try it out, I don't think they probably have as much temper about the subject matter. So when you brought that up, what were the reactions? Some people didn't know. They didn't know you had to have a Facebook account and you had to, it had to be active. So that did turn them off from getting one. Um, but I was going to, you know, I have to tell them anyway, <laughs> so they're informed. Uh, a lot of people didn't care, you know, because I, you know, I think, even if you have thoughts about it, everyone has a smartphone these days. We're all giving our data over to Apple, Android, and any other, even Google. You know, if you're on the internet at all, your your privacy is pretty limited. So I don't, yeah, I don't have the answer for that. You know, I, is I don't it, think anybody does. Is it even worth like worrying about Facebook? Like I think in my in my um, tweet, I talked about TikTok. TikTok is doing way worse stuff than Facebook probably is although i don't think anybody really knows but um and i've been using that for months and giving up all my data to them and i don't really care because i still like tiktok so i yeah. don't know i don't know yeah. the way the way i think about it is i appreciate those who are vocal on both sides like ask the questions give reasonable pushback like it doesn't hurt anybody put giving, yeah. giving pushback or advocacy for something, or at least just like putting your thoughts out there, it doesn't hurt anybody. So I think if anything, it's going to ask, you're asking questions that might actually lead to some answers that are good for everyone. But where I get annoyed is when it's the far extremes on both sides of those conversations. Yeah. Like, exactly. I, I just, I just give up on the car. I it just, I, I give up. I don't, I don't care to interact <laughs> with it. I'm just going to be honest. There's no winning. There's no losing. There's no conversation. 
there's a couple people I'm thinking of and I'm sure they'll comment because they know I'm thinking of them. But like ask the questions. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Because at the end of the day, I mean, the people who were really pushing back and asking the questions, they really just want what's best for people. Like that's the good thing. Like if you're anti one company or extremely for one company, at the end of the day, everyone just like, is asking the questions to get to the middle and just wants the best for each other. I, um, I think there was there was a design, <clears throat> excuse me, a divide ever since like the first headsets. You know, there was HTC versus the Rift mm. back in back in the day. These people were mad about the exclusive Oculus games. Um, that was a huge thing back then. <clears throat> I mean, they're they're mad about um, Resident Evil coming out right now only for the Oculus Quest, but they're also the yeah. ones who are they're the only ones who funded it. So at exactly. the end of the day, I, I, I mean, I'm not like. I'm not trying to pick a camp here, but like, I, if they're the ones who are funding it, you're damn right it's going to be exclusive. They literally built this game for VR. That's why it's an exclusive. Yeah. Are you going to be buying that game? Because I know you, uh, I saw one um, of your horror videos. You don't seem to do too well with horror <laughs> VR. Horror scares me. So <laughs> maybe. I, I, I still play Into the Radius, though, even though that game scares the shit out of me. <laughs> it's still one of the best games I think I've played. Well, isn't, that the, isn't that the beauty of VR though? Like if it really like, yeah, a traditional flat game can scare you, but it's a different type of fear in VR. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's primal. Like you are being attacked. And I think that is one of the most beautifully awesome things about VR. Why I personally love horror. Like that's my number one favorite game. Like when I watched your Into the Radius <laughs> clip where they, I don't it know is. what the, the guy's called, but he, he kind of like flashed close to you and yeah. you got nervous. Then he flashed in, in your face and that wasn't like a jump scare. That's primal fear. No. Like everything in your body, IRL was telling you to run, I'm assuming. Exactly. And the fact that like you have to reload clips individually, I had run out of a clip. Like it was empty. So I had to reach into my backpack, grab like some spare bullets, put it into the clip or the magazine, and then reload my gun without dropping it. <laughs> like, it's crazy. That game is nuts. And I hope that I, I want to see what else that developer does. Oh, yeah. Think- that- who Out of that? any VR game, I've never seen like such interactivity of the like your body and the weapons and stuff. Like usually, you can just like reload the magazine or you know just stick it in, but this time you have to actually physically load it up. <laughs> it's crazy. So when it comes to a little off topic, but when it comes to the content you make, so you make like I've seen Feet Saber. That that was I mean I, I've seen that I before, <laughs> but but like. The feet stuff, like you seem to really like the fringe of VR and the show what it can do. What type yeah. of content for like 2022? Like, what are you hoping to share with people to get them excited about virtual reality? Um, I just want to see what other crazy things I can do. I guess I feet saber is is great. I love. I love there's not a lot of people doing that. I just think it's so much more fun than regular feet saber. I used to play DDR a lot as a kid, mm-hmm. so that just reminds me of like VR DDR. I guess. For for reference, and, guys, she's she's strapping Vive tracker. I mean, I'm assuming it's trackers <laughs> to your feet. And trackers, she's playing, it's full body yeah, tracking. And she's and, playing Beat Saber with both her hands occasionally, yeah. but mostly her feet. So you know, if you were already feeling like Beat Saber was hard, here you go. <laughs> I've tried. I've almost tripped a few times. Um, but yeah, I, I I love Feet Saber. I was actually like, I never played Beat Saber before that mod came out. I I was bored of it <laughs> like these it was just kind of i wasn't very good at just using my hands so when i heard my feet saber i tried it out and i just kind of fell in love with doing it that way it looked hard um, so it looked real hard it's depends i mean i guess if you if you used to play a lot of ddr if you're like dancing i don't think it's that hard but i also can't play regular beat saber i'm terrible at that i also can't um, dance but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean Depends, but I guess it is harder. You can trip over yourself, but uh, yeah, I, I love doing that. So probably more feet saber. Um, and I don't know. I just I like finding crazy stuff to do, like the fully immersive Skyrim stuff. It's so much fun being able to talk to NPCs with your own voice is crazy. I don't know if you ever tried that no, when you were playing I'm Skyrim, not, but that sounds it's cool. <laughs> so can yeah, you do you can, like the, the actual like. Dragonborn, like, oh, like yeah. abilities. Oh, yeah, you can shout. You can fuse her <laughs> It'll go off. That's Say all the shots, awesome. literally. Um, but even a thing where if you have hand controllers, you can, like, uh, do this with your controllers when you're riding a horse to, like, take the reins. Oh, nice. 
<laughs> See, that's why I was happy to talk. This is why I was happy to talk to you because the whole I'm bored of VR. There's nothing to do now. Granted, you're on PC VR. That's going to be a different beast than some of the people who are using uh, the Quest. However, I think this statement works for both to varying degrees. There's plenty to do, but you got to use your imagination. You got to try yeah. new things that that just go buy a game on the store and pay thirty dollars and expect to be blown away. I don't think VR is there yet, personally. I think it's going to take a little actually, bit of a user. Um, I was blown away by like the Quest hand tracking when I first tried it out. I think I was yeah. trying Hand Physics Lab. At, that was really interesting. Just being able to touch virtual objects using real hands. I think that new um, uh, guitar. Oh, man, I, I always forget this game's name. I'm not. I'm. A, you know what? Oh, the Guitar Hero one. Yeah. I think what, I what's it called? Do you know? Do you know what it is? Because I'm. I'm not, not going to sure. not. I'm actually going to give its name this time because every time I forget to say it and it's going to get the unplugged it's going to get the plug it deserves it is called unplugged that I'm very excited for to be able to play guitar with just my hands in VR like that's beautiful yeah I, I think that's going to blow a lot of people away too. um one thing too I had it pulled up you made a tweet that I was really I, I like to see you seem to be we, we kind of jumped around, but you brought up kind of friction, the physicality of VR earlier. Mm -hmm. You seem a little annoyed with the people who make excuses that it's too physical. Did I read uh, that tweet wrong? Wait, did I make a tweet on that? Something about the, um, you know, com people complaining that uh, it's too expensive. Quest is two ninety nine. It takes too much physicality. Oh, yeah. Things like that. <laughs> the joke, yeah. I'm, I'm just curious um, your thoughts on, are, mm -hmm. is it is it blown out of proportion, the physicality that VR needs? I think it's, I think it's, you don't have to be physical. You can sit down and I've sit, sat down and played a lot of VR games. Um, I think it's more immersive when you're standing up and running around. But no, I don't think you necessarily have to, to enjoy VR. I think there's a lot of stuff where, there's a lot of accessibility options, so... I yeah, just, I mean, I. Oh, go ahead. It, it, it's kind of a ambiguous question, but I guess the thing that it's done. I mean, like, okay, so I went a little personal story that happened this weekend. I went for a bike ride. I saw mm -hmm. this off-road trail um, that I hadn't gone on before. Uh, I have a few around here, but I saw it and I went for it. And I remembered it kind of spun off to a different trail that I've been on. And there's a giant tree that was put there one time, blocked the road. And I assumed it was put there purposely. I've seen enough horror movies. I'm not going to go over it. I know that's how that ends. <laughs> but the tree was gone this time. Someone cut it in half and it was open. So I, I went. And uh, I now know why the tree was there. It's because the path has a bunch of hidden holes in it. And I dumped. Real fast, real hard hurt my leg. The entire time I'm going back, I was uncomfortable. It hurt. But... I ended up taking another new path because it was interesting and I wanted to see where it went. And I'm like, there's all these uncomfortable things that I do. I was in pain, but I do it because there's a lot of joy on the other end. So these people who complain that VR, you know, it's 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 tough to put on, it's hot, it's sweaty. I'm like, there's a bunch of fucking shit I do in my life that's really uncomfortable, but it brings a lot of joy. Why are we... Why is gaming got to be the thing that's supposed to be super relaxing? I don't think it has to be. I think it can be uncomfortable. Yeah. It, I I mean, I, I love running around. I think there a lot of people, you know, they, they get home from work and they don't want to have to put on a whole bunch of stuff and run around. And I've even been like that sometimes too. You know, sometimes I just like don't feel like, you know, making content or <laughs> yeah, putting on a whole thing much. and running around. But, you know, I, I still do it a lot of the time just because I know I'm going to have a good time with it. Um, <clears throat> I think, excuse me, I think people, the big thing with VR is you have to try it to really understand it, mm -hmm. to get like the full feeling of what it is. So that's why I used to love demoing VR, um, back when not a lot of people have it at it. Um, I would throw like these giant parties at my place and like have people try on my headset and <laughs> you know, show them what it's like. And most of the people were like, okay, this is awesome. I'm going to go out and get a headset now. Um, so yeah, I think it's just something you have to try a lot of the time, but hopefully the quest is making that more accessible for people to just like uh, take the dive and get one before trying it. Maybe. I don't know. Do you think there's like a whole bunch of programming that we have to like undo for people's mind that they've been playing games sitting down for so long that we have to unprogram that gaming is not as relaxing 
anymore? Um, I think, well, I don't know. Is there like a killer app yet? I think Half-Life Alex did mm. a lot to make people I would, get into VR more, but I don't know. I yeah, don't know if that's a real I would thing. argue that we do not have a killer app yet. Yeah, probably not. I mean, VR chat, maybe. I mean, I know a ton of people that got VR and full body tracking just for VR chat. I guess we'd have to years. define what killer app would be, first of all. Like, killer app to me would be, in my opinion, something that was so good that everybody would just buy VR specifically for. Yeah. And I think Half Life got close to it, but the PC got requirements close. probably made that. Uh, not accessible yeah. yes but i think if something came out for the as much as i love pcvr and want pcvr to have the breakout game uh i think something standalone has to be it personally i think something has yeah, to be that big yeah i agree which is i mean it's already kind of happening there's a lot of developers going straight to the quest because you can obviously make more money with it there's more headsets um i'm still going to be a huge proponent of pcvr cuz i that's what I've been using, and I, I think overall it's, it's a much, it's a much better experience, in my opinion. Um, I love my quest, but I just like that you can do so much more on PC. I like you know tinkering with stuff, modding stuff. So well, there's this whole like line of thought though that the so the quest being standalone, PC VR being not wired, but I think there's this whole school of thought that. <laughs> We just assume that standalone, standalone, and PCVR is PCVR. When in reality, the second we start having things like possibly the Steam Deck or the future that Valve's going down that oh, they're yeah. showing with the Steam Deck, where PCVR, I, I don't think, I don't think PCVR and standalone are always going to be separated. I think PCVR will eventually have like a standalone esque component to it, whether that's the Steam Deck or something like that. Like technically that's still rooted on something, but to me that's mobile and standalone in its own sense. Um, but I think that might be just stretching the terms a little bit. Yeah, but that makes sense. Um, I, just I still think there's there's always going to be like a PC market. Oh yeah. Just from from someone like myself, I love modding that stuff and tinkering with like you know different programs to see how much I can get out of these experiences. I think there's always going to be a market for people that really want to live in like the cutting edge of, oh, yeah. of this kind of technology. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the most of the market is going to move, I think, towards standalone stuff. Yeah. Which is, I, it's. I mean, that's good. I think like more headsets, more VR. Yeah, I more just think people are so married to the idea that standalone means and has to mean mm -hmm. that everything's on board, like Oculus Quest 2. It has to be a, a self-contained unit. But I really do think we're going to get to the point where... PCVR really will have something. It's still going to have something that it has to connect to possibly, but the fact that that's mobile to me is a whole different version of standalone. Mm -hmm. Because that's if I can play VR off my Steam Deck, like if that ends up being a thing or future versions, to me that's fairly mobile and fairly standalone in my, in its own sense. And that's mobile PCVR, and I think that's an oxymoron that a lot of people just want to fight. That <laughs> PCVR has to be rooted to this giant tower and in your room. But I think mobile PC VR is going to be a thing eventually. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I've already met people using, like, Google. They were using, like, cloud gaming and mm -hmm. using their Quest. And they were they said they enjoyed it. Uh, they were playing, you know, high-end VR, PC VR games, just streaming it through a laptop using the, I don't know what they were using, one of the, one of the streaming services. I think and they said they had a lot of lag, but they, they liked it, so... I think change is coming quicker than people expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, you started, you said, what, 16, 17? Uh, yeah, with VR, I started right at 16. Yeah. And, and we look at where we were there to now. That is not yeah. a long <laughs> amount of time. Five years is not a long time in tech uh, for dramatic changes as we've seen, which is pretty amazing. Um, looking at the time, though, I do like to end the final section to kind of pass the floor off to you and put you on the spot a little bit. What I'd like to ask mm -hmm. people is their general thoughts on the state of VR, um, usually spun positively, but also what you're looking forward to and what you want people to kind of know about VR and why they should be looking into it now. And of course, I'll step in and, and we can talk about that. But I want to hear your thoughts on kind of the state of VR and what, why people should be looking into it now. 
Uh, well, I think right now there's just, there's so much you can do. You know, you can, there's, uh, you know, you can hang out with people in social VR, Neos VR, VR chat, you can play things like Skyrim, Half-Life Alex. I think this is, this is a good time to get into it. You know, there's just a lot you can do. Um, it's, I think it's, it's way more exciting than typical gaming. I think a lot of people are getting tired of, excuse me, someone is calling me. Sorry about that. But um, I think there's a lot of people getting tired of the generic flat games that are out there right now. And with VR games, it's a lot more innovative. Mm. You know, it's people are trying new things. It's a new way to experience playing games or exercising or it's like visiting worlds. Um, I like to think of it as like a holodeck, you know, from Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> it's like visit different areas in the world and you can go to space. <laughs> or just well, I like... mean, for context, like how, what are you seeing in your headset mm-hmm. right now? Like that, that in itself oh, yeah. is interesting. I am in VR. That's, that's right. <laughs> I am. Right? I, I, uh, I mean, yeah, even for like doing work or something, browsing the web, I've got like a screen, a giant screen right now. And, uh. You know, I don't have a real big screen in real life for people that have may have seen my stuff. I have a very tiny screen <laughs> that I use. Um, I don't even own a TV, actually. And I don't own a desk. I've moved away all my furniture. And I just use VR most of the time. Yeah, it's um, pretty powerful. I mean, I know like Ryan Engel of ProPod does all his work meetings now in VR from what he's... He, well, maybe not all, but he's done a lot of them in VR and he's really enjoying it. And I think that's like understated, like we're talking right now. I, I'm in my room, but you're in whatever room you decide to be in right now, like in VR. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a beach. I'm <laughs> sorry, I've got the beach scene. Like um, it's, it's pretty powerful stuff when, when people like stop thinking in just terms of gaming and realize that we're communicating. I don't know where you are somewhere in the world and... We're talking, you're talking on a beach, I'm talking in my room, and it's about as normal as a phone call to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I think that's why I, I used to play a ton of VR chat, just because I was kind of blown away by um, being able to talk. Actually, the first social experience I had was Rec Room. I used to play a lot of Rec Room. Oh, back really? In the day. That was one of the, that and Alt Space. I was big into those uh, back before VR chat got released. Um and I was just like blown away being able to like high five people over the internet or play basketball or something or paintball. Um, I went into all space for the first time in my entire life a week ago. I couldn't believe it took really? me that long. It was a lot, but I haven't tried it. I tried it, I think like <laughs> six months ago. It used to be a lot better in my opinion because they had like, it was like a tight knit community. People would play like cards against humanity and now... I don't know. <laughs> it's gotten kind of strange. Yeah, but... I can't. I can't vouch for it, but it was very. It's. It, it's still an interesting dynamic. Like I was on stage talking with someone about NFTs. Well, a couple dozen people were looking at us, and all with their little micro expressions that you could see <laughs> on their hand. It just. It's very surreal. It, I, I don't. Yeah. It was hard the process at the time, but then post thinking about it, um, the accessibility of it was just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I think that's the future of communication that and oh. like i don't know how long do you think I, until that is true because i feel like a lot of people push back on wanting to do meetings in vr mm-hmm. right now i mean i can understand the pushback the, the headsets are not super comfortable so sitting there for an entire meeting might be a little bit much for most people um at how long i mean i think we have to get to a point where vr is as easy as like putting on a pair of glasses or something mm. which right now you know the quest is making strides towards that but it is still not as comfortable as like a pair of glasses <laughs> hopefully they'll get lighter and smaller in the future you know ready player one esque type of devices we might know um, really soon about the next one <laughs> sorry maybe. i said we might know maybe the next one the uh, next oh, yeah. quest. <laughs> it, it, it could be lighter and nicer i don't know what do you what do you, you do you expect by the time we have the next uh what oculus connect mm-hmm. virtually that we're gonna have another headset coming yeah, I've heard a lot of things. Vive, Vive, or Quest Pro, Quest Three, or something. Um, apparently, there's eye tracking, and I like to keep up with the rumors. Those are the rumors. 
and the yes. new controllers. I think I saw something about it. <laughs> I don't know how accurate it is. I've heard some stuff about the new Index 2. Possibly an Index 2. From Sadly <laughs> Bradley. Even... He's going hard on that. I love it, though. It, was, it wasn't It was Sadly It's Bradley. It was someone, it was someone else who I will not mention and they got to visit valve <laughs> oh i don't want to say head. i don't want to say too much about it I no. apparently you saw it <laughs> He's, mm, okay index two confirmed an well okay i i <laughs> my lips are sealed <laughs> I know. there are there there are things about the sunset that are crazy i don't know it, it sadly it's bradley i think went over a lot of stuff but um gabe is doing some stuff some weird stuff <laughs> I, i'm pumped I, I will say the index is my daily driver i'm looking for the next one especially because uh my valve index cables on borrowed time right now i am yeah. seeing constant pixelation everywhere so it's about to die on me so gabe brother well okay i can say no. this apparent so the new index controllers they are supposed to have better joysticks thank apparently. you thank That's, you that is the that is the rumor do you know what do you That's know the, yeah my Mine you know broke what number like I'm on? Four oh, you're How many? four times? I had to RMA it like four times, yeah. I'm on number seven right now. Crazy. I, 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 I like, I debated buying like a second pair just because I wouldn't have to, you know, that way I can keep like using my thing if it <laughs> breaks. But it's lasted a while now, so. Yeah, I think with people like you and me who spend considerable amount of time using PCVR, they're fragile as fuck. They're real fragile. <laughs> it's the joystick. They went like the Nintendo Switch route with the with the joystick. I don't know why. Like it doesn't seem that hard to make a joystick technology has been around since yeah. when did the Xbox controller come out? Long, Early two thousands or something. I, I had to change my entire play style <laughs> uh, with certain games like Pavlov. Uh, Everyone you, has to. Yeah, you have to use like yeah. the grip and not touch the. You don't. You can't click I, it, right? No, I just don't. Don't click the joystick. Yeah. I, I, I I purposely and I don't even like. I'm so delicate pushing forward on it too. I don't want to like grind it. But anyway, that's 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 another. What are you playing Pavlov? What's your what's Search your... Destroy and Team Deathmatch. I'm mostly Team Deathmatch, mostly because it's non-stressful. It's honestly it's therapy to me. Jumping into <laughs> Pavlov and spending a couple of hours just shooting people constantly. It's therapy to me. It's got no stakes. I don't care if I win or lose. I'm just trying to be better every time. Like it's his personal goal. It's more or less. Pop one is a big one, and uh, those are really the two games I spend about eighty percent of my time in. And then I Thanks. dabble with other stuff. I'm sure yours is mostly Skyrim. I'm assuming. I do. I mean, I, I play Population one sometimes, but I'm terrible at it, so <laughs> I get killed really quickly whenever I try playing it. But I like the the B haptic stuff with Population one. I think it's great. Yeah, I feel the witness that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Super well, look, fun. look at the time. I want to give the final words to you. Um, definitely plug yourself. Let people know where to find oh. you and anything you want them to know. Cool. Uh, so Genghis VR on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. I am mostly... Oh, we never talked about the TikTok stuff. Really oh, did. let's do that real quick. But, no, no, no. Oh, real okay. quick. I really actually want to hear your thoughts on VR and TikTok because I'm pushing forward hard. <clears throat> yeah, no. TikTok is great. I mean, I started back in uh, June and I think I have almost like 90,000 followers now. And I'm loving it. I think their moderation is uh, annoying, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's happening with everyone right now because it's run by an AI. That's how they're doing their moderation stuff. And the AI is just taking stuff down for really silly reasons. Like all creators, not just VR. This is like everyone on the app. They're they're banning people with, they just banned someone with like 10 million followers Ooh. out of the blue for nothing. Um, hopefully they get their act together. But yeah, I have been really enjoying TikTok a lot. Um, I think it's fun. And with, with your um, comment section, are you finding a lot of people like first time viewers of VR? Are you able to reach a really good new audience? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You're, you're, you know, you've been on TikTok. Yeah. The, the algorithm and for you page on there is crazy. You can get so much in reach just from like one video if it blows up and uh, you can reach a lot of new people that have never tried VR. Obviously it puts you into like a certain, um, niche so people that have yeah. watched maybe other vr videos are interested in it you'll start being pushed um those types of videos so then you're usually getting comments from people that at least have some idea what vr is so they're not going to get they're not going to start like leaving yeah. you a bunch of but i have gotten those too you know pe some people don't understand i just had a well, video hit like six million though. whoa whoa yeah which one was this one 
I was a feed saver when I was doing Rush E and it hit like 6 million over a couple of days and a lot of people were like, ah, oh, this is crazy. I've never seen this before. That's um, awesome. You should, that's, congrats. Like that's, that's why I'm pushing TikTok so much too. Like think of the, like the struggle VR, you, I, I'm not putting any shade on them. I'm one of them. Yeah. We're, we're, we're fighting for views on YouTube. Like the, the get. It's hard. The, yeah. yeah. It's, I think like if you're not a, a Josh Dub or something, Josh it can Dub, be hard. Josh Thrill Seeker, the, the big ones, Mike and yeah. all them, like they pull numbers, but it's still hard for them too. Like I talk to Thrill all the time. Like it's hard for everyone on YouTube, but TikTok is really, it really gives people the ability who otherwise would not have it on other platforms to reach a considerable amount of people with creativity, joy, and really fun things like your show. Yeah. That's true, but it's also kind of like scary. Like they could just ban me any day for for nothing. <laughs> like yeah, it's true. I don't know. It's it's very volatile. It's a lot more volatile than YouTube or Instagram or really any of the other apps right now. Are you able to make any income on those? I don't know anything about TikTok. Oh now. yeah, you were asking about that. So you can. Um, there is a creator fund. I know people that they're able to pull like a couple thousand a month. I could probably be oh, making wow. some money from it. But I've also heard that if you join this funds that TikTok will um, periodically like suppress your videos or even you'll be like higher ranked to get banned or something because they don't want to pay you. So it's Oof. kind of a corrupt app. I mean, I, it's run by China. You know, people should know that it's, it's a Chinese app and they don't care really. Like they just, you know, they don't care that much about creators, but they also have the best algorithm on the planet right now. So it's like, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Yeah, they were figuring out. I just see, I saw the news today. They apparently say they have 1 billion users right now. Which yeah, is it's crazy. Absolutely <laughs> insane. I don't know how many humans are on the earth because that number keeps going up, but that's a considerable portion of the entire planet. Well, it's not geolocked either. So, um, something like YouTube, if you get a lot of views on YouTube, you're mostly going to be shown to people in the US if you're mm -hmm. an English speaking YouTuber. With this, it once it blows up, you are shown to people worldwide. Like you can be shown to millions of people in an instant. Yeah, and they'll start I, leaving I comments that. in different languages. Yeah, I noticed that. But like Japanese and Chinese creators mm -hmm. keep popping up on VR channels for me on TikTok. And they do some wacky shit. I love it. Yeah. But it's very, <laughs> that would never, ever happen on YouTube. On YouTube or something. Ever. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully someone will make like another app that isn't run by China with a good algorithm like that. But probably not. <laughs> TikTok's so, here to stay, guys. High risk, high reward. Say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I cut, you, I cut you off earlier on the plugs before oh. we got on TikTok, so I do want to finish that oh, so right. people know where to find you. So uh, YouTube, Genghis, I think it's under Genghis VR. It's under Genghis VR for everything. Twitch, YouTube, TikTok. You can look me up on the Nexus, too. I'm, I'm a modder. Um, and then I'll, I'll give you the link for the Wabadak thing. I'll DM it if you want to put it in there for oh, people yeah. that like modding games. <laughs> Definitely send me all that. Um, yeah, it's at Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Well, I'll make sure we'll put everything, um, everything, all her links, including the mod links will be in the video description. And we'll also be putting clips of this chat, little nice tidbits on the Eric for present clips channel that are a little more watchable if you don't have a lot of time. Um, but either way, thank you very much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun to talk with you finally. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I will be following you closely because I really, like, not trying to blow smoke up your ass, but I really do appreciate you uh, showing kind of the fringe VR, showing the creativity about it, not just the, the hype of what's going on, but really showing how you can just use your imagination to take what is available to you and use it in really unique and creative ways. I think people feed off that and that's what's, builds like the next generation of VR users. And I think what you're doing is just amazing. So thank you. Again. Thanks. Like to show what's possible. Yes, VR, so. exactly. Uh, with that being said, guys, that's going to be it. And as always, a quick sign off. We'll see you next time. Space Cowboys. Peace.